And what does the logos and the rhema word do? Logos plus rhema equals the power of God. This is exactly what Jesus was. He was the word wrapped in flesh that dwelt among us. Everything that he spoke was the rhema word. So he was the logos word. The logos word is the written word. The rhema word is the spoken word. And whenever Jesus, he was the written word, the logos word. He was the rhema word. You put those two together and there was nothing, nothing that Jesus couldn't do. Amen. Everything he spoke came to pass. The blind had to see. Oh, the ones that were deaf had to hear. Amen. The ones that were lame had to walk. Amen. Oh, arms was restored. Legs were restored. You know, what? it's just, it's, it's, it's about healing. It's about restoration. It's about deliverance. There was a change when God spoke it. Amen. It's kind of like, you know, I had someone in it with great heart, great heart. And I probably shared this once before, donated a bunch of canes and walkers and everything like that to the church so we could help people out. And that's great, but I threw them all away in the dumpster because I'm not believing to give a handicap. I'm believing life. Amen. I know some people are going to agree with that, but you know, uh, I'm believing life. I'm going to pray for a healing. I'm going to pray for restoration. I'm going to pray for deliverance because that's, that, that's, this is what Jesus expected. Did Jesus ever pass out anything to help a situation? No, he, he healed the situation. He brought a solution to the problem. He didn't bring a Band-Aid. And how many times we put Band-Aids on things instead of fixing and resolving the problem? Oh, I have an addiction. I have a problem. But we put a Band-Aid on it, which is an excuse. And until we get rid of the excuses, nothing ever changes. Because I can give excuses until uh, I justify everything. Amen? There's always an excuse. Uh, tomorrow's another day. I have another hour. Oh, you know what? God is so good. He supplied me. You know, yeah, God is good. But there has to be something that changes. And that's the logos and the rhema word. Everyone wants change, but no one wants to do the work. Oh, the disciples, you know what? They, they wanted to follow Jesus, but they, they had to walk it out. Amen. That means they had to take some stripes on their back as well. They had to take a beating. Someone, someone uh, you know, had, to, had to throw a stone at them. Amen. Someone threw some bad words at them. Amen. You know, it, it, it takes work. We all want change, but this is where the addiction part comes. That, that church is, is an addiction if we don't change. Amen. If something doesn't manifest within us to change, then what are we here for? Oh, I want change in everyone's life because I'm looking at children of God. I'm looking at the power of God. I'm looking at individuals that God says right here, Jesus said in red letters that you'll be able to do greater. You'll be able to heal the sick. You'll be able to cleanse the lepers. You'll be able to raise the dead and you'll be able to cast out demons. That's what the word of God says. That's not what I'm saying. This is what the word of God says. You know, it was speaking over your life, speaking positive, because that changes the atmosphere. It, the, the rhema word connected to the logos word is like lighting a candle. Right. When you light a candle and you walk into a dark room, darkness has to flee. Right. It's the same thing. It says in Philippians 4, 7, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. It comes by the logos word and the ramus word. Ephesians 6, 12 says, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual host of wickedness in the heavenly places. <laughs> Sticks and stones today is about taking those thoughts captive. Amen. We talked about the Logos word. We've talked about the Rhema word. We talked about what it means. We've talked about speaking it. But how about those thoughts of I'm inadequate. I'm a mistake. I'm an accident. I can't do anything. I failed through school. I'm just stupid. I'm ugly. I'm this. You know what? How about those, those thoughts that, that, you know what? We just dream about being a superhero or we dream about this and we're wasting all kinds of time, valuable time that we could be spending in the word or, or doing other things in a fairy tale because of something that, that is, is, is broken within, inside of us spiritually. Amen. You know, I might've been beaten as a kid, you know, uh, you know, uh, in, 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 in my early ages, but then I keep, I keep just pre processing that and dreaming oh you know what I might have been put down you know as a young kid but now I'm using it as an excuse that you know I want to be this or I want to be that you know all these dreams and fairy tales all these things within our head that's not manifesting not making any any sense within the real world amen or how about these thoughts that we need to take captive that are overcoming the flesh because all the thoughts will overcome the flesh and reign and rule in the flesh if they're not taken captive right do we write these thoughts down? Thoughts of jealousy, 
thoughts of anger. Why do I feel lonely? Why do I feel depressed? Why, why do I feel that I'm not capable? Why am I always comparing myself to someone else? Why is it when the neighbor gets a new car, I, I have to feel like I need a new car? Why if someone gets this, I, why, 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 why is money such a value in my life? Why, why does money rule my, my life? Why do I have a type A personality where I just want to mow over everyone and it's just about me? How, how, how about the pride? How about the love, the, the thoughts of, of loving something else that's not of God, which is idolatry? Well, these are the things that, that we're talking about that I want to take captive. This, these are the things that, that we have to take captive and we have to hold and we have to put in prisoner. As a prisoner, we have to put it in a jail cell. Amen. Because our hearts and our minds are a door. And what we open the door to, what is the eyes or the light of the body? Whatever enters in. See, see our heart, our mind are big doors. And, and a lot of times we open the door to the wrong thing and then we allow it to come in. Now we have to take it captive. Or a lot of times your friend will show you something. Oh, look at my phone. Look at my calendar. Oh, look what Sister Josie's doing. Amen. Oh, you know, and then the gossip starts and all these other things. So, you know, what? that thought that we need to take captive could come from someone else too. Amen. But the thing is, is every time we open the door to something else besides the word of God, we've put a mail slot in the door. And, and now what we've done is since the door's been open or since we viewed something, since we've taken a look at something, since we oh we're dwelling on something. Now what we've done is we have allowed this door that was for security to keep something out. We've put a mail slot in it. And now Satan can send in things through the mail slot to lead us the wrong direction because all it is is a thought. See, Satan doesn't have to come and take you captive. All he has to do is throw you a thought and you'll take yourself captive. We're not that important, amen? I mean, I don't know about you, but I'm not Jesus. And Satan didn't come and, and try to tempt me for 40 days and 40 nights in the midst of the wilderness, amen? But he sure did throw in some thoughts. Just take one extra look. Just cheat. Just lie. Oh, you know what? You're lonely. You'll never have that spouse. You'll never be loved. You'll never, ever get accepted. These thoughts. And then if we don't take them captive, then they start growing. And they start manifesting out outwardly. Because every physical thing is manifested from something spiritually. You don't believe me? Why do you walk around in a frown on some days? Because you're upset, you're angry, you PO'd at the whole world, right? Got up on the wrong side of the bed. So something spiritually puts a frown on you. Ah, oh, you wake up in joy, you hey, got the biggest smile there is, amen? So spiritually, everything starts spiritually. Everything is spiritual. That, that's the reason why it says, you know, this is why Paul addressed the church the Corinthian church, that, that he said, you know what, for in, in verse um, 10, 3 through 6, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. We don't war according to the flesh. These, this is something else that's bigger than the flesh. Anyone can take over anybody. You know, if you're not big enough to take over your neighbor, all you have to do is get three or four of your buddies, and maybe you will be able to take over them, amen? Maybe just get a bigger bat. The flesh has nothing about it. This is the reason why sticks and stones might break my bones, but, I mean, but words will never hurt me. That's a lie from the enemy. That's exactly a thought that, that Satan wants you to believe, because words are the most powerful thing there is. You can beat me, and I'll heal, amen? You can disown me. Oh, you can disown me and call me something and that's gonna, I'm going to live with that forever, amen? Because I have that thought. I have the power of something that was not of God that entered in into the chambers of God and now I have to take ownership of it. We've read in Exodus how so many times the temple was taken over and desecrated and, and they had to go in and cleanse the temple so the presence of God would come back. Well, you know what? Whenever we have a thought that's not lined up according to the word of God and we allow it to root in, what is it doing to the temple of God? We are the temple of God. The lust, the hatred, the anger, the love of money, all these things, an idol, that all that is, is going to put in... Put, Put something else within you that you're going to manifest something else outwardly and it's going to put God on the shelf. So we have to cleanse the temple. 
We have to take those things captive. This is what Paul's saying to the church. This is what he's saying. I'm going to come to the church and I'm going to make some things straight. And by the time I'm done, you're going to understand what's right, what's wrong in the word of God. And then I'm going to have Holy Spirit is going to minister to you. And Holy Spirit's going to lead you and guide you and direct you and equip you. Because Holy Spirit's our comforter. And we know the comforter within the Greek means, you know what? The one that comes along the side of us that's strong, that has strength. Why aren't we relying on Holy Spirit to guide and direct us that has strength instead of ourselves? Wise counseling is great, but you got to make sure it's wise. Is it of God or is it of the world? Oh, sister, you just go ahead and tell me everything about that. Oh, sister, you, it's okay. A little lie is okay. Just go ahead and get that. Brother, I'm telling you just to mow them over. You know, that, those are the, that's not wise. Amen? That's not wise. But it says, it continues on, for the weapons of the war, of the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. So it, it, we have a war going on. We read the scripture that, you know, we, even though there's not war going on physically, we always have a war raging in our minds. Am I the only one that has a war? Am I the only one that talks to myself? Right, have you ever been sitting at the light and you're sitting there talking to yourself and you look over and someone else in the other car like, right. you know, that was before Bluetooth and all the, you know, now we have an excuse. But we always have this war that's raging. And within this war, we have to have a game plan. We have to take prisoners captive that doesn't belong there. So the temple doesn't get desecrated, amen? So the temple doesn't get unclean. So the temple doesn't go out and do the things that, that it shouldn't be doing. But I love the word captivity because it means to take control of. That's what it means. To take control of. To take captive. To assume power to influence. I love that. To assume power to influence. So that means that thought that came into my mind, my heart, it doesn't line up with the word of God. I know it doesn't, but I have to take it captive. I have to take control over it. I have to take its influence away so I influence it. That's right. I want to walk through this because I love Snickers. I love the Oreos. Man, the double stuffed Oreos is calling my name and I believe it's right. But the word of God says to take care of my temple right here. Amen. And I know that that's where it's going. So I have to fight this war. And oh, you know what? I need to walk down the other aisle and say no to the Oreos. Amen. Yeah. How many of you have gym memberships and you never see the gym for the last two years, but you've been paying on it? Next time you show up, you find out they moved it, uh, a year ago. They're, they're in Orlando, but you're still paying it. Amen? It's those wars. It's that battle that we fight within our minds that we have to take control of. We have to take captive or determine over someone conceived of asking someone captive like a prisoner of war. This is what we have to do. And being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. We're fighting spiritual church. God's word is spiritual. It says in John 6, 63, it is the spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. If we would understand this, we would not be laying treasures up here on earth. We'd be laying treasures up in heaven. Amen. Uh, there's life. What we speak is life. And this is the reason why we have to be able to speak the rhema word and acknowledge the things and take things captive. Because we know in Ephesians 2, 2, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who, know, who now works in the sons of disobedience. Who's the prince of the air? Satan himself. Amen. You can't see the air, but he's in the air. And you know what he's doing? He doesn't have to spend much time with us. All he has to do is throw something through that mail slot. Have you ever had something come in the mail that ruined your whole week? Have you ever had what, a junk email? Someone email you something, someone text you something, and it just messed up your whole day because we didn't take that captive? We didn't take it prisoner. So I, I allowed myself to dwell on it. And now I have a day that's not too great. So how do we take these thoughts captive? This is the toughest part. This is the toughest part out of the whole series, Sticks and Stones, is this message today. Number one, we have to acknowledge it. We have to accept it, and we have to confess it. The children of Israel wanted to go right back into bondage because they were hungry, their flesh. Esau gave up his birthright 
because he couldn't control what was up here. And he manifested it through here because he was hungry. But until we acknowledge it and accept it and confess it, nothing will ever change. Well, I, I know it's up there, but you know it's up there, but you haven't acknowledged it. And it's okay to acknowledge it, but if you don't accept it, nothing's ever going to be done with it. And then once you accept it, then you have to confess it. Because you have to speak the rhema word that I do have an issue. I do have a problem. I do have a lust for money. I do have a lust for women. I do have a lust for men. I do have a lust for whatever. I, I do have jealousy. I do have this. And we have to go and we have to confess it. Amen. I do have a problem. I, I do drink too much. I do do drugs too much. I do work too much. Work's an alcoholic. I don't spend time with the family. Yeah, I do confess the wrong things out of my mouth. I always is, I'm always negative. I'm always doom and gloom. I, we have to be able to acknowledge that you know what I do have this thought I acknowledge this thought I'm accepting that this thought is within my head and now I'm going to confess this thought that I'm going to get help and I'm going to go to God Almighty and I'm going to get help see we have to take responsibility for the thought it's real why are we pushing it off the country when they hear a threat from another country the nation takes it as okay well, we're acknowledging this now we're, we're, we're going to accept it, amen? And now we're going to confess it. We're, we're gonna, we, we need to start, is this real? Are they really going to send the nuclear bombs over? Are they really going to go to war? Are they really going to try to take over? Are they really, go, what, what's going on? But you have to acknowledge it, you have to accept it, and you have to confess it. Right. How about that weed in your yard? How many times you walked right past that weed because you didn't want to acknowledge it? Then finally, you did acknowledge oh, there's a weed in the yard, but you didn't want to accept it. Then you didn't confess it. And then the next thing, after five weeks go by, your yard's nothing but weeds. How about that flower bed that you didn't weed? You didn't acknowledge that there's weed in it. You didn't accept it. You didn't confess it. And now it's overtaken. Now you're better off to pull up the flowers and just mow over the weeds. Amen? You have to acknowledge, accept, and confess. You have to take ownership of it. I can't take ownership for your problem. I can't take ownership for your thought. Only you can take ownership because it's in your head, in your heart, your mind. I can help you. We can pick up each other's burdens. But until you acknowledge, accept, and confess, nothing will ever change. Acknowledging it is making a decision that it is real, like God says to do with, his, with sin. Amen? It says in James 5, 16, confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. You have to acknowledge it, accept it, confess it. If you're married, the one that you can confess it to, it should be your spouse. There shouldn't be any secrets. I've confessed all kinds of things to my spouse. Now that I've confessed it, honey, I'm dealing with this. Can you be praying with me? Honey, I, you know what? I, I'm having a, I just, I just feel a little low today. I, I just, you know what? I feel like just giving up today. You know, can you pray for me? I, I, you know, I, I confessed it. Now I have someone that's praying. Now, I ha, now, I, now it's out in the open. Now Satan can never use it against me. Hey, honey, I'm not feeling too lovely for the sheep. Amen. I want to slaughter them all. Amen. Can I be real? I have bad days. I have good days. But as long as I confess it to her, I confess it to the Lord, Satan can never pull it out of the closet and use it against me. Because you've just taken his powerful tool of your thoughts, your memories, your secret things, and you've exposed it into the word of God. Now there's no secrets. Now, Satan, where's your power? Where, where's your sting? Where, you know what? Because uh, last thing I knew is Jesus took all things, the captivity captive, sin and death. So all my sin, <laughs> I just exposed myself so you don't have to ever bring it up. Yeah. I just pulled open the filing cabinet and let the records go. But you have to confess it. Confess it to your brother or your sister in Christ. Confess it to God Almighty. But take ownership that it's real. Accept that it's real. And then confess it. Romans 12, 2 says, And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. The renewing of our mind. We, but I, until I take ownership, I'll never renew my mind. 
I have to take ownership that that thought is not of God. You know what? I, I, you know, what? I know Satan, you're telling me that I'm not going to get the job. I know Satan, you're telling me I, my business is going to fail. I know you're telling me that my finances are, are going to be just destroyed. I know you said my children will never serve. Oh, will serve God Almighty. I know that you said that they'll never be healed. I know you said that, you know, but let me tell you, I'm going to take it captive. I'm going to take it prisoner because I'm not going to believe in it. I don't live by sight. I live by faith than God Almighty. And the faith that I live by is the Word of God. But I have to understand that I live in this time, in this world, and that king of the air, that devil himself, the prince of the air, is going to come and throw these thoughts over and over and over and over, and I have to take them captive. I'm not a mistake. I'm not an accident. I am a man of God. I am a a woman of God. I I am a good husband. I am a a great wife. I am more than a conqueror. We have to take these captive. I have to acknowledge that, you know what, this thought is coming up. And I have to take it captive or else it's going to reign and rule. If I don't go pull up the weed, if I don't acknowledge it, accept it, and confess it, then I'll never go out and pull it up. And if I don't pull it up, we know what weeds do here in Florida. It manifests itself to everywhere. How many battles, how many things would happen? We just, we just um, remembered 9-11 just here just a few days ago. We know what happened. I I just wonder, out of all the threats America gets, if we didn't acknowledge it, accept it, and then confess it, how much more bloodshed would have happened over this time? They're real. Thoughts are real. Satan's trying to destroy you through thoughts. See, it says in Ephesians 5.11, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. How do we expose them? How do I expose that I have this thought that I'm inadequate? Acknowledge it. Accept it. I acknowledge it's there. I accept it's real. Now I need to confess it. Lord, I have an issue. I don't think I'm adequate, but I'm made in your image. I need your strength and your help. What does it say in Romans? You know, confess those sins unto the Lord. Confess that, you know, Jesus is Lord and Savior. Believe in the heart. Thou shalt be saved. Confession. Because when you confess it, you're speaking the rhyme of word. Lord, I got a problem. What, what, what did the individuals that stood before God, the Pharisee and the Sadducee, oh, you know what? The, the, he had all these special words in his prayer. His prayer was really long. And then you had this guy over here that all oh, he said, to Lord, I'm just a sinner. There was power within his confession than it was someone else's because he acknowledged accepted confessed there's things that we apologize for that we shouldn't be apologizing for amen because we're confessing the wrong things it's just that's just a simple thing amen so one acknowledge accept and confess two we have to react instantly take the thought captive instantly Do not let it get rooted in. Do not let it grow ground. Do not open the door to it. Do not receive it as yours. Amen. It's there. I I acknowledge it. I accept it. And I confess it. But I'm going to react instantly on it. See, when you act instantly on a threat, it doesn't become a threat anymore, does it? How many times if, if in the midst of war, if we didn't react instantly to something, that we would have been overtaken? Why do you think within the Bible, God says, you know what? I need you to go over and take the Philistines. I need you to go over and do this because you know what? He knows what's the best. You got to take that enemy. You got to take that thought captive or it's going to grow to a place that it's going to overtake you. Oh, all those lights in the Bible. Oh, you know what? They're going to take you over if you don't go over there. I need you to go and take everyone captive. I need you to destroy it. I need you. It's a spiritual war. This is a spiritual book. It's not a fleshly book. It's a spiritual book. I know that Satan's going to bombard you with everything that you don't want. And if you allow him to get root, if you allow the weeds in your yard, or if you allow it, if you don't attack the weed right away, it's easy to pull one weed, but we get lazy. And then the 
next thing, the whole yard's taken over. Amen. It's easy to, to wash one load of laundry, but if we don't do the one load, it ends up being five loads of laundry. Oh, it's easy. Oh, to wash one plate, but then, it, oh, I don't acknowledge it. I don't accept it. I don't confess it. So I'm not going to react instantly on it. So the next thing I know is I'm buying four other dishwashers because I have to load them all up because I've used all the plates. We have to react instantly because once it gets rooted in, why do you think cancer, they like to get it as soon as possible. See, they've acknowledged it. They've accepted it. They've confessed it. And now they've given all kinds of uh, treatments to, to help diagnose things ahead of time. Amen. And then they want to attack it instantly. God forbid if you, they see it. Because let's get it before it gets all throughout the system. Let, let me get the jealousy out before it goes and it starts rooting out things. Because jealousy will get me in my car following her around. It will get me on my iPad tracking her everywhere or tracking him everywhere. Oh, you know what? This anger, oh, this anger for my boss. Now I'm going to hose them over because I'm going to, oh, they, I'm going to steal this. I deserve this. I'm going to lie here. I'm... And then it starts taking over if we don't react instantly. See, it says in Ephesians 6, 17 and 18, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. What did it say? It didn't say in the flesh, did it? It said in the spirit, because we fight spiritually. Being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Praying. We have to be instant. We have to be instant. We have to react instant. Whoa, that thought just came in. How many times if men, let me just talk to the men. We've talked about it in Game Changers. How many times if you would instantly turn your head, it would have saved some grief. You wouldn't have got slapped. Instantly react. The logos, the rhema, together, instantly reacts with power of God. Jesus says, no, nope, that's not going to happen. It was gone. The demonic spirits, nope, you, you're, I'm casting you out into the swine. You're gone. Instantly. He took authority. I, I don't know of any time that will come back in a couple weeks. Oh, no, no, no. You're, you're healed right now. Right. You're touched right now. We're going to have it instantly because I don't want it rooted in you. I don't need it growing. I don't need it overtaking you because if you don't destroy it and take it captive right now, it's going to do more damage. Amen. It's kind of like whenever there's a crisis and, and someone comes into your house, a thief comes into your house. You know what? The more time you give to him, the more stuff he's going to have. Amen. You have to take him captive right now or he's going to destroy your home. He's going to destroy your life. He's going to destroy your loved ones. Amen. So you have to take it captive. I'm not going to let him in the door. I hear the door knocking. I'm going to instantly react not to open it. Amen. Oh, I might just blow a couple holes through it. Amen. If it keeps going. Amen. You know, because I got to take this captive because Satan's out here as a roaring lion trying trying to devour and destroy me. And the only way he can is if I allow this thought into my mind, in my heart, and it starts taking over. They never wanted me anyway. They wanted me gone anyway. They wanted this. They wanted that. I'm not loved. Last I knew you was created by God because he loved you. Proverbs 13, two through three, a man shall eat well by the fruit of his mouth, but the soul of the unfaithful feeds on violence. He who Guards his mouth, preserves his life, but he who opens wide his lips shall have destruction. We eat what we speak. Amen. You know, I'm a child of God. Maybe you need to put some sticky notes on your mirror. So every morning that whenever you go in there and your hair's not the best, your bad breath, you're, blow, you know, you're almost a Passover because you, you just breathe and it hit the mirror and it bounced right back at you. And you're like, whoa, Jesus, I can't blame my spouse for this one. And you know, oh, you know, you can look up and see that, you know what? I'm made and created in God's image. He loves me. I'm his child. I'm more than a conqueror. I'm an overcomer. He didn't make a mistake because God doesn't make mistakes. Amen. Put that scripture on that mirror. Put that scripture on your car. Put that scripture when you're walking out the door. That's the reason why uh, at our home we have a mezuzah. I have a mezuzah right there on the door of the office if you want to see what one is. And it's, it's God's word. And a lot of times the Jewish men, they'll put a mezuzah right in, on their doorway into their bedroom. So that way as they walk into their doorway, they put a kiss on it. And that lets their wife know that they've been pure all day. Just not physically, spiritually. But what if we did that with the word of God? That, you know what? I acknowledge, I accept, I confess it. That's not a sin. It's if I allow it to root in and I own it, I activate it, 
and I walk it out is what creates the sin. But see, too many times, see, Satan has told that lie. See, you're already sinning because you thought it. Oh, no, no, no. That's not the sin. It's acting on it is that what causes the sin. I, I, I'm just acknowledging that you vomited into my mind. I'm just accepting that it's there. I, I, I'm confessing it right now to you, Satan, that you've done it. Now I'm confessing it to my Lord and Savior, but I'm not going to react on it. Oh, the only way I'm going to react is I'm going to take it captive where it doesn't manifest. It doesn't grow. That weed is easy to pull when it's small. Have you ever had one of those weeds that you pull? And it's like, where in the world is the end of that root? Or you grab a hold of one of those weeds and the thing breaks and you fall like five spaces over. Oh, you know, you're rolling in the yard because it just broke because you didn't get the root because it was there too long. It rooted in. And now you believe the lies of the enemy if you allow it to grow. We have to react instantly on it. Take it captive. So we eat. So when we feel this thought, we acknowledge it, accept it, confess it. Oh, yeah, I'm repeating it because I want us to get it. And then we react instantly on it. What's the first thing we start doing? We need to start feeding our spirit and not our flesh. Because if we start feeding our flesh, we're going to fail. We start feeding our spirit. Our spirit will overcome our flesh. Because this is spiritual. We fight a spiritual battle, not a fleshly battle. So before I can lose weight, I have to get it in here that I want to lose weight. I've been heavy before. And I've lost weight. But I had to get it in here because the battle was in here, not here. The battle of being an overcomer, knowing that who I am and that I can, all started here. The battle that you're going to give up all your money, all your retirement, everything like that, and you're going to walk out and trust God Almighty, and you're not going to have nothing in your name, and everything's going to be of God's, and you're going to depend on Him every week for, uh, for, for you know, provision, for, for being Jehovah Jireh. That's what you're going to do. Uh, that was a battle. That was a warfare up here. But I had to take it instantly captive or the church would never have been started. Yeah, let me just tell you. Yep, you're right. You know, whatever God chooses is how I'm going to live. Jehovah Jireh is my provider, not you. I know you're providing the wrong thoughts, but God Almighty, God's going to provide the right thoughts. So I had to take it captive. I had to start destroying. I had to start praying. I had to start getting in my prayer closet. I had to get on my knees, and I had to destroy those before they took root. Amen? But I had to react instantly. Proverbs 18, 21 says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. How many times we instantly let anger or something, and we start speaking something that's not of God? Let's stop and instantly take the thought. So our mouth isn't speaking death, it's speaking life. Philippians 2.10, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of those in heaven and of those on earth and of those under the earth. Isaiah 49.2 says, and he has made my mouth like a sharp sword. So let's speak that rhema word instantly and take those thoughts captive. 1 Peter 5.9, resist him steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brother, hood in the world. Oh, I love that scripture because so many times, as soon as something goes wrong, what does Satan want to say? You're the only one. Don't call anybody because no one's ever been there. No one's ever gone. You know, you're just, you're just messed up. You're not going to make it. But uh, you know, I don't know about you, but I, it, it tells me that, you know what? I, I have a someone else that's went through the same thing that if I acknowledge it, I accept it, I confess it, and I react instantly, you know what, I bet you there's some help out there for me. I bet you there's some churches out there that want to pray with you. I'll bet you you have a brother or sister in Christ that you might not even know that will sit there and pick up your burdens and pray and pray and pray and believe with you. Amen? See, right there, I love this. Resist him. Steadfast in the faith. Steadfast in the faith. That's staying strong in the faith. Faith right there means faith. That means trust in the gospel. Trust in Jesus as, as contained in the content of the gospel, that the gospel stands. We have the resurrection power of Jesus Christ. That's the reason why our gospel, our word, what we believe in stands alone from any other religion because no other religion has a Lord and Savior that's went to the grave and decided that he wasn't going to stay here and took the keys and rose himself up and sits at the right hand side of the Father. Amen. He resurrected and we are the only ones because we have the gospel of Jesus Christ and we can stand fast on on him that, you know what? I'm going to have my faith in the gospel that Jesus Christ has the power over all things. He took the captivity captive. He took sin and death and made it captive. Oh, and I just have to speak his word. I have to take and react instantly. Re Revelation 12, 11 says, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. And they did not love their li lives to the death. 
Testimony is the verbal evidence of a witness by which something is affirmed to be true. What is it? The verbal evidence. That's how you take it captive. You know why confessing is so important? Because your mind is that closet that's holding all those secrets and all those memories and all that things that you do. And when you confess it, you just took out everything Satan can use and brought it out into the light. God already knows it. But he's going, not going to acknowledge it until we confess it. Because he wants a relationship that we feel comfortable, that we can go to him. I blew it, Lord. I'm a sinner. Lord, I looked at some stuff that I shouldn't have. I said some stuff that I... He wants that relationship that we're comfortable coming to him and confessing. And let me tell you, I've never, ever had Jesus, ever, ever, and never, ever will be at the point where he will never forgive me. Every time I've come to him, his arms are open. I love you. I've done it. I've taken care of that. I've paid the price. I thank you for confessing it. I want it because you can't handle it. I need it so you'll be better. I died for your lifestyle that your life would be great. Point three, we have to strengthen ourselves. Strengthen yourself. So we have to acknowledge, accept, confess. And then we have to react instantly. And you know what? Whenever, how, how many times whenever you go out there and work in your yard, you pull the weeds, you plant some grass, and then you have to strengthen it, right? You have to maintain it. You know, just as David said in 1 Samuel 36, now David was greatly distressed. Oh, he was distressed. Can you imagine the thoughts that he's going through in his mind? You know what? Here's this king after me. Here's everybody else after me. I'm stuck in the cave, but I'm anointed king. So I don't understand why I'm running when I'm anointed king. I should be in charge of Israel, but now I, I'm in a cave. I, I, man, what is, what, what, what's going on? Does anybody, you know what? That promotion was mine at that job. I can't believe they gave it to someone that was not qualified. I've been there for 30 years and they never even gave me a chance. Oh, you know what? Those friends of mine, why didn't they give me? Why aren't they blessed? Why, God, are they being blessed and I'm not being blessed? Does this sound familiar? But if we don't strengthen ourselves, we'll go there. It's kind of like that yard. If I don't fertilize it, my grass is going to go away. If I don't water it, it's going to go away. And David was saying, you know what? I was in great distress for the people spoke of, strong, of stoning him because the soul of all the people was grieved. Every man for his sons and his daughters. But David strengthened himself in the Lord. In the Lord what? His God. His God. So we have to strengthen ourselves. That means we have to read the word. We have to meditate. We have to do PDJ. That's prayer, devotion, and journaling. It's important. We have to meditate on God's word day and night. And there will be like this tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in the season. His leaf will also not wither. I love that. So if I meditate on his word day and night, my leaf will not wither. And whatsoever I do will prosper. I love that. So wherever I'm at, if I'm in the midst of the valley, I know that I'm going to prosper. There's, there's something that is prospering through this valley. Oh, I, there's something that's prospering in the midst of this furnace. Oh, those three that was thrown in the furnace. Oh, what was prospering is they had an encounter with Jesus Christ right in the middle of, oh, Daniel was thrown in the lion's did. Oh, but he was able to witness and watch these, oh, these lions. Oh, just their mouths were shut. They never came to him. And then when he was called out, he watched the lions devour all of his enemies. Oh, but he was able to stand steadfast and he strengthened himself with the word of God. I don't know about you, but that's power. That's strength. When you go through something you have to get in the word of God you have to keep yourself strong because your mommy your daddy and your brothers and sisters aren't going to keep you strong they're going to pick up the phone and eventually they're going to get tired of picking up the phone and encouraging you you're going to have to get on your knees and you're going to have to know who God Jehovah is that he's my God he's my deliverer he's my savior he's everything so let me get in my prayer closet let me wrap the prayer shawl around because I need to get strengthened because I feel like a failure I feel ugly I feel inadequate I feel this I I feel that, but I'm here to tell you after I get up, I know who I'm in. I am in Christ and I am a child of God. So I'm going to walk this day out in victory. That crown of thorns weren't me, meant for me. That was for Jesus. He took the crown of thorns so I'd have the victor's crown. First Peter 2 9 says, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So how do we strengthen ourselves? 
Uh, you know, we, we, we're going to have to work better on our choices. Amen. That means if I know I fall short whenever I talk to someone, I might not want to call them, right? Maybe I need to lose some family's digits. Maybe I just need to call them around the holidays. Amen. Maybe it's not healthy to go to this restaurant that I used to go to. Maybe, it, you know, maybe I need to change the atmosphere instead of having rock music or, or depressing music or anything. like. Maybe I need to put some praise and worship on and change the atmosphere. Or oh, maybe I need to listen to some podcast and have the word going in through me. Oh, maybe I, you know, maybe I need to put God on the calendar because I want to make sure I don't miss God because all my hobbies are on the calendar. I make sure I don't miss any of my hobbies. I make sure I don't miss anything at work. But you know what? Over here on the God side, on the God calendar, it's completely empty. So, you know, in order to strengthen myself, I might have to put some dates on the calendar for God that this is my prayer time. Amen. Yeah. So in order to strengthen ourselves, that means we have to actually plan. Yeah. And you know what? I can plan my thoughts out for the next day. Because before I go to bed, I can tell myself I'm going to have a great day. I know what's coming, but I can have a great day. I'm going to have joy. I can go ahead and plan. Oh, I'm going for an interview tomorrow. I can have scripture right there on my mirror that you have this. You do the best and let God take care of it. Oh, what was meant for bad, God's going to turn for good. We can plan. Romans 12, 21, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. With good. How do you overcome with good? Is the scriptures of God. Philippians 4, 8 says, finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. What, what are we meditating on? Because this is what strengthens us. This is, what, this is what helps me. It says, finally, brother, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. This is how I strengthen myself. I'm going to strengthen myself throughout the week. I know whenever I don't have my prayer time, my study time, I feel miserable. I mean, I feel, you know, you ask my wife, she can tell you the days that I don't pray because I'm probably miserable there at the house. Amen. I'm not the one that can, you know, fake it white till you make it. I'm not that, you know, one. But she knows whenever I have my prayer. Have you had your prayer time? Have you been reading? Why don't you go back to the church and get in the sanctuary by yourself? Amen. I got to meditate on these things. I've got to ponder these things. I got to ponder these thoughts that, you know what, God, I don't understand why I did this or why you wanted me to do this. But, I, you know, I, you are God. Why are you pulling them out of Egypt and then you brought, brought them right to the Red Sea and now they're, they're trapped by their enemy? Why did I leave this job? Why did I leave this promote? Why, why, you know, why, why? It's all so God could glorify his name. And so he could say, look, I am God. You're my child. And I'm going to show you the way. And he parts the Red Sea that we can walk on dry land. So we could look back and watch the enemy be destroyed. Oh, if I ponder on the things that needs to be pondered on, I meditate on his word. I'm going to walk through the Red Sea. I'm going to walk through the valley. I'm going to walk through every situation. The addictions are going to split. Oh, I'm going to walk walk through and I'm going to be all oh, healed. I'm going to all oh, restored. I'm going to be delivered and I'm going to turn back all oh, because I'm meditating. I'm strengthening myself and I'm going to watch my enemy fall. But I know I had the enemy. So I know Satan's going to bring the thought back. So I have to strengthen myself. That's the reason why we always fertilize and water the yard. Because once you get all the weeds out, you have to start that strengthening process. Uh, the, the yard stays nice because you miss a water day. You miss the fertilizer. You, we know what it can do. If I miss the time with God, I know what it can do. I know. And I don't want that. I don't want that in your life. Because you are a child of God. And we can do this. We can do this. And I want you today, right now, if there's something that you need to acknowledge and accept and confess, I want you to do that right here in, with God. You can whisper it to God. No one has to hear, but you can whisper it to God that, Lord, I have a problem here. Lord, I need help. Lord, I'm a man and I I'm not supposed to cry. And the Lord will let you know, well, you know what? Uh, my son, Jesus, even wept. So what part of that equals a man will learn the truth as long as we confess? 
Can we do that, church? Because it says Psalms 119, 105 says, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. You know what that word means right there in the Hebrew? It, it's message, it's communication. That if I want my path illuminated by God's word, I need to have a communication with him. Lord, I'm having a battle and I feel like I'm losing. I need help. There was a point in my life where I, I couldn't close the door. Man, I got on my knees. I was finally done. I acknowledged it. I accepted it. I confessed it. And then I instantly reacted on it. And I'm telling you, when I, I went to the Lord with it, with a pure heart, with a heart saying, you know what, Lord, I, I'm ready. I can't close the door, but you can. So I need this door closed and I need another door open. And I'm telling you, it, it happened immediately. God can do it. God can do it, church. You're God's children. Amen. He loves you. He wants the best for you. He wants his power and his manifestation going through you. Amen. He wants your life the best. He wants your kids, your sons, your daughters saved and set apart. Your spouses saved and set apart. He wants you to have the best life. But we have to take those thoughts captive. Can we do that, church? Hey, everyone. Hey, Pastor Daniel. I hope that you enjoyed the message today. Powerful word, powerful word from God. And we want you to get connected with us. We want to hear from you. If you gave your heart to the Lord today from the message, we want to hear from you. Email us at admin at peakworship.com and give us the good news so we could celebrate with you. And we want you to check out the website, peakworship.com. And we want you to like us on Facebook and Instagram. You can like me on um, Facebook and Instagram personally. We want to get connected with you. We want to share our hearts with you. And we want to hear more about what's going on in your life. So make sure that you get plugged in and get connected.